Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about perpendicular bisectors and angle bisectors. So let's take a look. So first of all, we have what's called the perpendicular bisector theorem. And it says, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So basically what this is saying is that if I have a point, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector. So first of all, let's say I have this segment here, AB. And this line that's going through it, let's say line M, is my perpendicular bisector. So perpendicular bisector means two things. It means I am bisecting the segment, so though I have two uh, congruent segments created, and it's also at a right angle. So the bisector and that segment create um, right angles. So it's saying if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, so line M is my perpendicular bisector, so let's say I mark off a point here, a point on the perpendicular bisector, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So if I was to connect that any point on my perpendicular bisector to those sides there, it's basically just telling me that these two segments that I've now created are congruent to each other which in theory should also make total sense because I did just create two right triangles and by side, angle side, I could prove that the two triangles are congruent and then by CPCTC prove that those two other segments of the triangles are congruent to each other. The converse says if a point is equidistant from the endpoints on a segment, then it would mean that there is this is a perpendicular bisector. So if I tell you there's a perpendicular bisector, then I know I would know that these two segments are congruent or the converse, if I just tell you that, hey, these two segments are congruent, well, that must mean that there is a perpendicular bisector there. Circumcenter. So the circumcenter is where the perpendicular bisectors intersect um, at this one point of um, concurrency. So it's that point is called the circumcenter, and you're going to see in just a moment what that actually means. And that circumcenter is equidistant from the vertices. And again, in just a moment, you're going to see what that means. So here is just a full out explanation of a perpendicular bisector. So when you see the, that term perpendicular bisector, it means you are working with um, right angles. And it also means that you're working with congruent segments. And just for sake of time, I'm not going to write out the full word. So perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular means we're working with right angles. Bisector means that we're working with congruent segments. And here it says, the circumcenter is where the perpendicular bisectors meet. So I want you to look at this triangle ABC. And what I want us to be able to understand from this diagram is if I look at segment AB, this line here is the perpendicular bisector. It is creating two congruent segments and a right angle. If I look at segment BC, okay, BC is now split up into two congruent segments by that line at a right angle. And then segment AC is bisected into two congruent segments. And I just need to go back actually for a moment and add in another marker here at a right angle. And now when you construct perpendicular bisectors in a triangle, where those points all meet, where those lines all meet rather, is called the circumcenter. So this point here is called the circumcenter. And something special about the circumcenter that was mentioned in the previous uh, slide rather, is that the circumcenter is equidistant to all of the vertices. So all of the segments I'm making in yellow, that those are actually all congruent to each other, the circumcenter. Um, so it's pretty interesting. It's like as if, you know, there were three towns, towns A, B, and C, and you wanted to put a new store and you wanted the store to be equally distant from town A, town B, town C, if you actually on a map constructed the circumcenter, you would find the location that's actually directly the same length from all three towns. So no matter what town you were from, you would travel the same distance and get to that store. All right, so we're going to take a look at this diagram, which is super similar, but you're going to see I actually marked up some of the letters here. Um, 
if I wanted to understand that point D is the circumcenter, so again, that does mean, and I'm going to go ahead and um, mark up some things here, that these are all right angles, okay? And then my segments are all marked up as congruent. My sides of my triangle are all uh, bisected. It says BE is equal to, I'm sorry, congruent to, so segment BE, I would know is then congruent to segment AE, right? Because the entire side of the triangle has been bisected. Segment AF is then congruent to segment CF. Segment CG is congruent to segment um, BG, okay? The distance from the circumcenter to the vertices is congruent. So that's what I marked up in yellow on the previous screen. So from A to D would be congruent from B to D and C to D, okay? So where the circumcenter is to those vertices, those segments are all congruent to each other. You also have quite a few congruent triangles created in this diagram now. So if I was to look at triangle A, F, I'm sorry, A, F, D, what I should notice is that triangle AFD, this triangle here, is congruent to triangle CFD, right? Because they share a common side, a common right angle, and then they share this common side. And actually, all three sets of sides are congruent because they share the side from the flexive property. And then these segments here are congruent to each other. So then, therefore, those two triangles are congruent. Triangle AED would then be congruent to triangle BED. So you've got this little mini triangle drawn. And then triangle BGD is congruent to triangle CGD. Okay. Now, actually constructing the circumcenter, and this is going to be a little challenging for me here um, virtually to do, but I'm going to show you to the best of my ability. I have a ruler here, and that was going to help me pretty much figure out where the bisector is. So I'm going to show you what that would look like, and then I may put the ruler away just to save myself some time. So let me um, create a line here. Okay. Okay, so if I wanted to figure out what the per where the perpendicular bisector would be, I would measure the side of a triangle, figure out where my halfway point would be, which is approximately right here, and then from that point, I would go ahead and I would construct a line so that I have officially bisected the segment at a right angle. And I know it's a right angle only because I was lining it up with my ruler to make sure that if it's perpendicular to each other, it's a vertical line to my horizontal line. And then what you would need to do is you would need to, um, you know, rotate your ruler. Whoops. You would need to move your ruler. I'm having a hard time with that. Measure another side. This is obviously not going to be the best thing for me, so I'm just going to eyeball it right now for the sake of this lesson. But I would go ahead and I would measure this side here on the left, figure out what the, where the midpoint is, and then construct my bisector. And then my third side here, again, find the midpoint of that side, bisect that side, and make a right angle, a perpendicular line rather. And you can see my sketch is not perfect, perfect, but you can see that these two lines, these three lines intersect each other. Now this triangle, guys, is acute. This triangle is acute. And what you're gonna notice is that the intersection is actually inside of the triangle. Whereas when I go over to a right triangle, if I go to construct some perpendicular bisectors, let me just make sure my pen is all good. I go to construct this side. I find the midpoint of this side and set up a line perpendicular to that side. And then my bottom of my triangle here, if I construct that, and I really should move that one over a bit to really bisect it. And then if I bisect my hypotenuse of this triangle, what I'm gonna notice is, look at that. If I create the perpendicular bisectors for all three sides of a right triangle, what we're going to notice is that the circumcenter is actually on the hypotenuse. 
Okay, so if you have an acute triangle, the circumcenter is inside of the triangle. If you have a right triangle, the circumcenter is actually on the triangle or on the hypotenuse. And now the last example I want to show you is if I have an obtuse triangle. And so I'm going to try my best here to create a line that's perpendicular to my segment that's on the left, create a perpendicular somewhat midway so that midway wasn't great i'm going to scooch that over a bit so again i'm trying to bisect the side and make a perpendicular line and then if i go ahead and i bisect my third side and create a perpendicular to it you're going to notice here that if your triangle is obtuse then the circumcenter actually intersects outside of the triangle okay so that's a pretty interesting um, series of events, rather. And it looks like that. Okay, the next part of this lesson is the angle bisector theorem. So it says, if a point is on the bisector of an angle, so I'm going to mark this up, if a point is on the bisector of an angle, so here we have an angle that's in black, we have a red angle bisector. If a point is on the angle bisector, then it is equidistant from the sides of an angle. So the distance from this point to um, one of the sides of an angle here, and remember distance is always created at a perpendicular line. Distance is always the shortest distance uh, created at a perpendicular. Then those lengths would be equidistant to each other. Okay, so any point on an angle bisector is then equidistant to the sides of that angle, which then do create two little congruent right triangles for sure. The converse would be the opposite then. It says if the point in the interior is equidistant from both sides, then that means that the red line would be an angle bisector. So the regular theorem is if you have an angle bisector, then any point on the angle bisector is congruent, the distance is congruent to the sides of the angle. And the converse is if I tell you that the two sides, um, these two segments are congruent, then that must mean that that was an angle bisector. In center, so angle bisectors meet at the in center, okay? So just like before, perpendicular bisectors meet at the circumcenter, angle bisectors meet at the in center. So it says the angle bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point called the in center that is equidistant from the sides of a triangle. So a perpendicular bisectors meet at the circumcenter, which is equidistant to the vertices. The in-center, where all the angle bisectors meet, is equidistant from the sides. Okay, so an angle bisector means you are working with congruent angles. Okay, an angle bisector just simply means you're working with congruent angles. So here, an in-center. So if I, these are all angle bisectors here. So angle A, is split into two congruent angles, angle B is split into two congruent angles, and angle C is split into two congruent angles. And then the point where they meet is called the in-center. Now the in-center, it says, um, I said before, is equidistant from the sides. So if I was to construct the length here, the distance to the sides, remember distance is always I perpendicular, that distance is all the same. Now, in my previous example, I talked about there being three towns, and then the circumcenter would be the location that's closest to all three towns. In this case, if you're talking about a side, then it's kind of like this would be the best location. So let's say if you're playing tag and there was three walls that were safe, this would be the point where it wouldn't matter which wall you went to, wall AB, wall AC, or wall BC. Um, it's the same distance from any wall, and you could go to any wall to basically be safe on home base. I just think of my um, times as a kid just playing tag and, you know, going to the wall that was safe, and that would kind of be that same thing. So that position here, the in-center, is the same distance to any of, let's say, the three walls in a room. Okay. So point D is the in-center of triangle ABC. So again, in-center is going to mean that it's the, um, the intersection of all three angle bisectors. So I'm just gonna mark up my diagram. So again, we know what we're working with. And then remember these segments here that I'm gonna draw in yellow, 
those distances, which are all at a right angle, are congruent to each other. So angle EAD is obviously congruent to angle FAD. Angle FCD is congruent to angle GCD. And angle GBD is congruent to angle EBD. The perpendicular distance from the in center to the sides is congruent, which I marked up in yellow. So um, H, which is a new point that I created. So this point here, I'm going to call it H. The perpendicular distance, I'm going to call I here. This perpendicular distance, I'm going to call J. So H to D is congruent from I to D, which is congruent from J to D. Okay. Now the in center, it says here, is always in the interior of a triangle. So the best thing we can always do, guys, is grab a protractor, actually line up the protractor with the vertex of the triangle, measure the angle. So this one I'm measuring is approximately, let's say, 58. Cut that angle in half. So if I take half of 58, I'm at 39. I'm going to make a little dot there, move my protractor over, and then construct that angle bisector. So um, measuring an angle, and of course this is just a sketch of what it would look like, but actually measuring the angle and then marking up where halfway would be and then going through and create doing that for every single side is how you would construct your in center. So if I was to go ahead and then measure, whoops, measure this angle here on the right, I would measure that this angle is about 70, uh, 71. If I go halfway, that's going to be at 35. So if I make a marking where 35 would be approximately, and of course, pencil and paper is gonna be the easiest way to do this for sure. Me doing it on my screen here, and I know my screen's shaking, um, and creating those angle bisectors here for each one. And I can mark up, you know, what the whole point is, that these two angles are congruent. These two angles are supposed to be congruent. You can see my red line is not the greatest. But the whole point of showing you this is that it's not like perpendicular bisectors. Anytime you have angle bisectors, the angle bisectors will always intersect in the interior of the triangle. So the in center is always in the interior. Even over here, if I was to just visually try to um, bisect these angles here. If I bisect my 90 degree angle, if I bisect that angle there, and if I bisect this angle here, again, you can see the in center would be in the interior of the triangle. Last one, if I bisect my angle on the left, just eyeballing it, bisect my angle on the right. Again, just eyeballing it for the sake of the lesson and bisecting this angle here. My drawing, again, is not the best, but notice it's never going to be on the outside. It's never going to be inside, I'm sorry, on the line of the triangle. It will always be in the interior. Well, that's it for today. Just showing you, and that's obviously a much, much better diagram. Thank you so much for following along about perpendicular bisectors and angle bisectors. Bye.